This time we look at five of the very best modern classics. So how do we judge a modern classic? Some people it's just how good the bike performs all round, how fast is it, or how much does it resemble a true classic. But for me personally, a modern classic must ride and feel in some way like a real classic bike, like the bike on which it is at least notionally based. Does the bike exude a bit of character, a bit of charisma? Contrary to popular belief, character is not another way of saying dodgy and unreliable. In fact, a lot of older machines are pretty damn reliable, really. But when you ride them, they exude something that a lot of modern bikes simply lack. So here are five machines that exude the charisma of a true classic. Kawasaki Z900 RS Many Japanese companies have dug into their stylistic archives to develop some sort of machine that encapsulates their glorious past, if you like. Suzuki's new Gitana is a good example of this. But for me, the Kawasaki Z900 is probably the best example. It has the look and feel of the older bike, and the four-cylinder engine does a really good job of replicating that that you would expect on the old Z900. Of course, it's a little bit more sophisticated, but all round the bike does have that classic feel. They've avoided using things like LCD clocks on the bike, and this gives the bike a much more classic feel than some of its alternatives. The only area of the design that really doesn't work is the fact that it uses single rear shock. The original would have caught up in a twin shock. But it's actually not that noticeable when you look at the machine aesthetically. The underpinnings of the machine are of course from the standard Z models, including that four cylinder engine which makes about 110 horsepower, and the chassis also. But they've done an excellent job of disguising the bike and making it look very different from the machine on which it's based. So all round, a good effort by Kawasaki I have to say. Royal Enfield's 650 Twins Royal Enfield's simple, air-cooled, parallel twin machine has taken the market by storm. Its humble 47 horsepower engine belies the fact that it's really out Triumph Triumph. The machine has a more authentic look than the Triumph and when ridden it has a definitely more authentic feel. It feels much more like a classic bike than any of the Triumph range does. It's much more engaging than they are to ride and uses more traditional clocks and gears. So when you're riding the bike you get a much greater impression that you're riding an older machine. This is really not the case with the Bonnevilles. So if you're comparing the two side by side, the Royal Enfield for me wins out every time. It's also handily cheaper too. Honda's 125 Super Cub. So similar is this to the original bike that you almost feel like it's cheating and it's actually a continuation, which in many ways it is, but in fact the engine is new, the suspension and general setup is new, as is the whole chassis, the whole bike actually mechanically has very little in common with the original 70s and 90s of the 1980s and 70s. Stylistically this bike really works. It may not be a big performer but it looks really great and somehow they've managed to make the old Cub actually look cool. Performance on the 125 is a bit better than it was on the older bikes. It should get up to around 60 miles an hour fairly easily. Controls are very similar. There's the classic automatic clutch and the overhead cam engine. So the feel of the bike when it's running is very similar indeed. But the bike is of course a considerable upgrade from its original form. There's now fuel injection, a completely new chassis and front suspension that actually works. Somehow the styling of this bike has really caught on. It is a very appealing little machine. It looks every inch the classic and could easily be confused with the original machine, although it is in many ways a lot better, but still has the same character when you're riding along on it. Fit and finish overall is very good, so what you're getting is a really nicely put together machine for your money. It may not be the cheapest 125 on the road today, but it is perhaps one of the most stylish. Furthermore, if you're looking for a modern classic, it really does add up to great value for money. Compared to all the other bikes on the list here, it's an absolute bargain, with the possible exception of the Royal Enfield. This is, just like the original bike, a truly great commuter. An absolute great bike all round. Motoguzzi's V7 series. Motoguzzi's V7 range has been with us for a few years now, but actually it could be argued that it's a continuation rather than a reproduction. 
because it uses the same chassis that the previous models had, even though they weren't classically styled, and it can trace its lineage all the way back to the end of the 70s and the V35 and V50, and of course, importantly, not the original V7. That was a very different machine. Over the years, of course, the bikes had a number of upgrades. There's ABS, traction control and fuel injection, and has been since the V7 Mark II, in fact. The general styling has changed fairly little over the time the bike's been in production, but the engine has upgraded considerably. This is largely due to emissions, but also because they really did need to move the design on, at least from an engineering point of view. Happily, this means that the new engine actually resembles the old 850s rather more than the V50 engine. This is a great bike all round. Handling is very good. The brakes are pretty good, although they could be better, and the engines have been good since day one. There's a real charisma to these motors that you simply don't get in more modern classics. If you compare it to a Bonneville, it's like chalk and cheese. I mean, I have the smooth refinement of a 900 Bonneville, for example, but it really does feel much more like a true classic. It's a very engaging bike to ride and great fun. It's one of the few modern bikes that you can actually ride around on. It will perform reliably and do most jobs that you ask of it and yet will still feel like a true classic. Because in many ways, that's what it is. It's a continuation of a true classic range rather than a modern classic. And on the road, you can definitely sense the difference. The Norton Commando 961. Few modern classics have had a more turbulent history than Norton's Commando. Originally designed by engineer Kenny Dreher in Oregon, the United States, his design never really reached full production as he'd simply ran out of cash. Englishman Stuart Garner then purchased the design and the name and began to produce the machines in Great Britain. Unfortunately, he too was rather underfunded and the company came better known for its dodgy dealings than actually producing too many bikes. Some people laid out money, but they never received machines, and others received machines that were simply well below par. Not surprisingly, the company went to the wall in just a few years, and it seemed like that was the end for Norton, once again. However, engine company TVS stepped in and have now invested £100 million into the company, developed an old new production facility at Solihull near Birmingham. The new machines are better finished and exude a better road quality. This promises to be a real modern classic. Overhead valves, a truly traditional look and feel to the bike. Could this be the king of modern classics? Quite possibly. It may not be the biggest performer, but it may be the one that exudes the most character. Please comment below. What is your favourite modern classic? Which bikes would you put on the list? Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, thank you very much for watching.